Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the SIG M400 Tread. Uh, this is the newest member of the SIG family. Uh, the Tread is, was designed to be a, let's say, economical or a low-cost alternative to the rest of the SIG family to compete with many of the rifles that are out right now that are sub-$1,000. This particular rifle retails uh, for just in the low nines. And you're probably going to find it in the, in the wild for the mid-8s or so, low 8s. Uh, so for a SIG rifle, that's an excellent price, and you're not being skimped by no means on SIG quality, which uh, I can definitely say with this rifle, it has a lot of advanced features. And it's also a new, if you want to call it, family of weapons uh, as well. It has several branded products that we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. We're going to go over this rifle and see what makes it special. First off, we have a 5.56 millimeter rifle, uh, direct, direct gas impingement or internal piston. Overall length of stock, stock closed, 30.8 inches. Starting in the rear, we have a Magpul SLK stock with a six-position receiver extension, mil spec, standard carbine buffer. This is the standard lower receiver that's used on all of, of SIG's models. You have ambidextrous QD detachment points, 7075 T6 aircraft aluminum uh, forging lower receiver, ambidextrous safety. Uh, you also have an ambidextrous magazine release, which we'll see on the other side. Standard location for the magazine release and we flip it over. You take a look at the bolt catch, you'll see we have an extension on the bottom here, which makes it much easier to uh, push in to lock the bolt open to the rear. As you can see, we have the ambidextrous magazine release on the bottom here as well. Upper receiver, you have a standard 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum uh, mil spec type upper receiver, forward assist, cartridge case deflector, as well as ejection port cover. Now, both the barrel extension and the upper receiver have extended M4 feed ramps. The bolt carrier you have on here is a standard mil spec bolt carrier. Now, getting up into the barrel and the handguard is where this gets really, really interesting. Showing us the handguard, which is 15 inches, and you can see that it's M-lock. Interesting thing about this is it's also M-lock on the top, so you have to have an M-lock uh, 1913 rail to be able to install uh, your front backup sight, which this does not come with, but is part of the branded uh, product line that comes with for the tread. The barrel we have is a 16-inch stainless steel barrel. It has a, a gas block, which we're going to take a look at when we take the handguard off which is very low profile and drilled and pinned in place to my, to my pleasure. The barrel is one and eight inch twist, uh, six lines and grooves right hand twist. Sort of unique kind of these days because most, it's it's most of the time you're either seeing a one in seven or a one in nine. So this is sort of right there in the middle. Uh, this one probably would, would stabilize 77 grain OTMs pretty good. Uh, I shot basically 69, 62 and 55 grain uh, in it. You also have SIG's three prong uh, flash suppressor. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take off this handguard so you can take a look at the barrel. Shown under the handguard is the stainless steel barrel 1 and 8 inch twist. And we can see the gas system here. And we can see this is probably one of the lowest profile uh, gas blocks I've ever seen in the industry. Uh, you notice that we have very, very thin. And it is drilled and pinned in place, which is something that makes me extremely happy. Uh, this is not going anywhere. Uh, but this is relatively unique, seeing this gas block you know, in this condition. Uh, we've seen a lot of light ones that are made out of titanium. But this has removed a lot of material. And we can see that the barrel is relatively thick in the rear. Uh, still a lightweight rifle, though. Proprietary barrel nut. As we can see, we have the uh, proprietary SIG flash suppressor as well, three-prong. Now, we're going to take a look at the inside here as well. And what we have in the inside here is we have a standard mil-spec trigger. I have to say this trigger breaks a little bit better than your standard mil-spec trigger. Uh, so it's definitely a lot smoother with a lot less creep. And if you also notice back here, you'll see it looks like a black AccuWite, which is basically what it is. Uh, what that does is it keeps the upper and lower receiver basically tight as can be. There, there's no movement in it whatsoever. This is one of the things that SIG has recently changed over the last year or so. Uh, prior to the, prior to using this, they had a spring-loaded plunger that was that was uh, attached into the inside of the lower receiver. Uh, that was on the MPX, MCX, the Tread, uh, the uh, 716, the 516, and it appears as though on all models uh, they are replacing that with this rubber type uh, insert. Now, I don't know whether that's uh, a cost savings or whether it happens to be an uh, improvement over the, over the spring loaded plunger. I'm not quite sure, but that's one of the changes that we've seen recently coming out of SIG. Now, looking at the upper receiver, again, we have a standard mil spec bolt, bolt carrier group, um, Carpenter 158 steel bolt. And then we have a standard charging handle, standard mil spec charging handle. The optic I have on here is also a SIG optic. Uh, it's a Tango 1 to 6 by 24. This is the optic that was just recently chosen by the U.S. military. Uh, this is an excellent, excellent optic. This is more geared for a 308, uh, but this is the one I just happen to have available uh, to put on this rifle here for test firing it. It's 
got an, you know, an external handle on here for you to be able to adjust the power very easily. Illuminator reticle. It's a very, very nice optic. I've been using SIG optics for the last couple of years, and I have to say I'm very, very happy with them. Uh, I have several different models, and uh, the, there's never been an issue for as far as the, the, you know, the optics are very, very clear. They're very, very, very durable. And considering what I put these scopes through, they've been on dozens and dozens of guns each. They've been perfect. Uh, also, it's mounted on a Geisley mount. Now, the Geisley, the Geisley Super Precision mounts are probably some of the finest mounts in the industry for as far as precision. There, it's an it's an excellent mount. As you can see, this is designed for a 308. The way that it, uh, way that it sits, this is all the way forward, and you can see how much it's sticking out the back. But uh, this mount, you can also get you know for a uh, AR-15, which is a much smaller mount, which fits properly on here, and it have more of a cantilever on the front of it, so it can set the scope you know more forward where it should be. Now for reassembly, you just drop the handguard back on. Now, when the handguard attaches, it has two attaching points that slide over the upper receiver to lock it in place. And we flip it over. And it's only two bolts to lock the handguard in place. Now, this handguard comes in two lengths that you can get. A uh, 15 inch, which you see here. It also comes in a 13 inch. If you're someone like me, who you you, know, you tend not to like the longer handguards, you know, you know, I don't use the Chris Costa sword type, uh, you know, you know, holding method. I prefer the, you know, the standard, uh, more traditional types of holding. Just pretty much hand tighten these down. Some your charging handle. Bolt carrier. That's all there is to it. We're speaking about uh, the fact there's a lot of branded products. These are branded with the Tread logo on them. Uh, you have, as we spoke, we have two different handguards, the 15 inch and the, and the 13 inch. And those are both $149 uh, manufacturer suggested retail price. There's a Romeo 5 Optic, which is $149 as well. Adjustable backup sights for $149. The single stage trigger is $119. Amy charging handle for $49. And an M lock front sight adapter for $29. So those are all brand new products that have the flag logo, and those are all currently available today. We also have a three-chamber compensator for $49, M-Lock hand stop kit for $29, and an M-Lock vertical grip kit for $29 as well. So we have about eight different uh, branded products for this rifle. Now, for as far as taking it to the range in ammo, uh, we decided to keep this as a complete SIG system. So the ammunition that we tested was all uh, SIG ammunition. We had first, we had the SIG 55 grain full metal jacket, then we had the SIG 77 grain open tip match. And then we had the SIG 22360 grain hunting ammunition, which is a solid copper projectile. Uh, we had the lab radar out there, so we did a, uh, some velocities on this in this rifle. And what we got was the SIG 223 Remington 55 grain full metal jacket at 2,766 feet per second. The 77 grain OTM was 2,398 feet per second. And the 60 grain was uh, 2,516 feet per second. The SIG ammunition I have found is extremely accurate. Uh, it's very, very well-made ammunition, uh, as you'll see from the target. But I think we're going to do now is we'll take this to the range. We're going to see how it shoots. The rifle fired flawlessly with all ammunition that was put in it, uh, as you would expect from any SIG. 
there was, uh, although this is a lower cost alternative, I don't, I don't believe that there's been any cost cutting uh, in, as far as the manufacturing of it is concerned. Also, this rifle there is a feature here that we see in the military grade rifles put out by SIG, which is an extractor guard that's located inside of the barrel extension, which sits right over the extractor and it, it keeps the extractor from being able to open or bend outward uh, in case of a overpressure or a kaboom, which is an important safety feature that also works very well for uh, over the beach. Uh, conditions as well and you even find that on this rifle so again you don't have anything which you'd say is cheapened um, I don't know how they got their price down but basically what you see here a lower receiver that same thing you would see on any of the M400 series the same upper receiver the same bolt carrier group uh, the only thing that you really have different on here is the handguard uh, and the charging handle which are you know the you know, charging handle is not ambidextrous which you can you can buy and the handguard uh, which is this very very narrow uh, and easily removable. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is not this is proprietary. You're going to have to stick with uh, this handguard on this rifle. There's nothing else you can get at this point, unless you were to swap out the barrel nut with a new barrel nut, and then you could put whatever you want on it. But the way this thing tread comes, uh, it's either, either this 15 or a 13 inch one. The barrel I expect would last quite some time, even though that it's not chrome plated. Uh, it's a good match grade barrel, uh, stainless steel barrel. Uh, the accuracy that we got was was very very good at 100 yards with it, as you saw on the target. The rifle I expect is going to do quite well because, quite frankly, in the industry right now, there's a lot of manufacturers who are making lower cost alternative. I mean, this is the first time really you can buy quality rifles for under a thousand. Most of the SIG rifles you can't touch for under fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. So to have this rifle, uh, you know, in the sub thousand dollar range, as I said, the MSRP is you know is in the nines, but I expect you're going to be able to get it in the low eights. But you get all the all the benefits and all those features. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, even better share, and please consider donating on our Patreon. Thank you.